Good morning. Good morning. Got bright faces out there and some droopy ones too, so that's all right. I'm kind of halfway in between, so that's a good thing. Announcements. We have the Friday night prayer vigil at 6 o'clock. The box is still available. If you have a prayer request, write it out. Don't put it in the box so that they know it's a new one. Put it down in the tray. And they certainly will be prayed for. And I can attest to the fact that prayer has uh, helped several people, some of which are on our list and some aren't. But uh, uh, so uh, on announcements, uh, adding to that is we do have our back to school hot dog festival next Saturday. If you aren't real busy, come down around six o'clock. And we're hoping that we'll have a few people that you can just mingle and welcome them and those kinds of things. And we also, uh, if you have not bought anything for the tote bags and you would like to donate a little bit of money for us to be able to get, we need to be able to fill 50 tote bags. That's our goal, to try to get 50 kids here. Um, See myself or Anne who isn't here yet, but should be coming in shortly. Uh, but if, if you would like to donate to the cause, we would appreciate it. Are there any other announcements? Hearing none, are there any birthdays? Are there any anniversaries? Tomorrow would be Aunt Pauline and Uncle Bill's 73 years. See Paige back there? It's a journey for Paige to come, and we appreciate Paige coming. I was running around trying to get things done this morning. Didn't get a hug to her, but I'll get it after church. Special music. During prayer meeting, we sing. It may not be the Gaithers. It may not be whoever you want, but we're here. What I want you to do is listen to the words. Listen to the words. Jamie, run these copies. Me and Nedra sang this on Friday night. We, we piddle around at the piano. She plays and we sing. I try. She does. I try. <laughs> But anyway, Jamie got the music for this, and he ran us off some copies. So we're going to sing. I've never been this homesick before, and I want you to listen. You guys need to get around the microphone. Want to get around the microphone? Get around yep. the microphone. You two get around the microphone because you okay. got to carry it. Okay. Be down a little bit because we're so tall. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing I wanted to point out. No one said anything. For the first time in 40 years, these are the original church colors. Because I, I had to take the other ones home, and Rhonda pressed all the new ones to get all the wrinkles out of them for me, and I never got them rehung. So this is nice. For at least one week. This is nice. 40 years since they've been out of the box and used. So. Yeah, not pretty. That's a color. Okay, Frank. This is kind of a peppy song. You guys listen. You're going to be, listen, you're going to be a little shouting this morning. There's a light in the window And the table spread in splendor Someone standing by the open door I can see the crystal river Oh, I must be near forever And I've never been this homesick
I can see the family gather, sweet faces all familiar, but no one's old or feeble anymore. Oh, this lonesome heart is crying, thank God spread my wings for flying. Lord, I've never been this homesick before. See the bright light shine. It's just about hope time. I can see my father standing at the door. This world has been a wilderness. I'm ready for deliverance. something. Are you homesick? Are you homesick? Your home's not here. It's not here. You're just pilgrims passing through this land. So if you never listen to anything, we may not be able to sing it like the Gaithers, but the words. Huh? No, I don't think so. We're glad everybody All right. Uh, you're not going to hear me singing, but we are going to sing. Thank you all for the song. He leadeth me, O blessed thought, page 128 in the blue book.
You may be seated. Since I, since I keep forgetting to turn my mic on, Jamie had it come up with a solution. We're going to leave it on, and he'll just turn me up and down. <laughs> okay, what? I was just going to say prayer concerns. Oh, that's what I'm getting ready to do. Okay, what are our prayer concerns? An update for Max and for Oakland. Max is home. He is doing much better. And he was, I'm sure his parents had to be with him, but he was allowed to drive, and he was excited. Oh, he got to drive. Oakland, um, I shared with you that she had no drop in the cancer cells, and then their church had a prayer vigil, and all of our churches prayed, and she had not had chemo for several days, three or four days. But on Saturday evening, her cancer cells had dropped half. Another blessing this week is that they tested her and there are no cancer cells in her blood. So praise God. Yeah, what a blessing. Yes, it does. Um, Tippy with her uh, shades on, but uh, she came through that uh, surgery okay. So we're glad to, that Tippy is with us and doing better. So now, I, this has been a crazy week. It was a cra I told you, it was a crazy week. But um, I've been to the hospital like four or five days in a row. We had so many people from both churches but um, have anybody heard any reports on Gail? I went to see Gail the day before yesterday. Um, the doctors here in town were going to make contact with the doctors in Cleveland okay. and have a consultation to determine what should be done. Okay. So, so Gail does need our prayers. Gail needs our prayers and she's still in the hospital. Yes, as far as I know. Well, I'll be going there today. Okay. I have a blessing and a scary one too. My uh, great granddaughter and husband maybe went to his monkeys and uh, <coughs> he was going to have them in the mountain and they uh, arrived. They got out of the car, took the baby out of the car and got in the house and she forgot her phone and went to get her phone. Now tell me again, who who was it? It was my great-granddaughter. Uh, Bobby Joe. Bobby Joe and Austin Griffith, your baby. Oh my. So we do praise God for... And, and it had three babies. So they had a true smoky mountain green. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Kim, give us an update on um, Tina. So we're waiting on a word from the Cleveland Clinic. Yeah. 
Okay. And Aunt Pauline is having some dizziness, so we need to <coughs> pray for her. I'm not going to. I'm not going to make a joke, but she's been having this for a long time. <laughs> not that long, but she has been uh, having this dizziness for a while. So. What about Glenda? Huh? What about Glenda? Glenda did get to come home. And uh, the first night, she stayed with um, Leanne. Leanne, her sister. So she, you know. Yep. Anybody else? Yeah. My sister's home, and I got to spend about three hours with her yesterday. First time I'd seen her since she went into the hospital up there. So it was a blessing. We both needed it. Now, what's her name again? Kathy Clyburn. Kathy. Okay. Yep. I have a cataract surgery What's this like all in the family? You know? <laughs> Phyllis has got cataract surgery Wednesday. Okay. Okay. Yep. Scott. They're both badly cancer. They're married couple. And Debbie. And then Kim Tilly. Kim. Kim Tilly. Um, we've been praying for her for a while. She's. Um, okay. And. Yeah. Okay. Saturday. Pardon me. Travel. Okay. Pastor Greg, I just want to say how thankful I am to see Katie. Katie back here. Little Katie, she throwed up. <laughs> My goodness. So I'm thankful to see the girls here. Well, now, Katie isn't that grown up because I baptized her. <laughs> and uh, that was just, I don't know, what was it? Three, four, six years ago, tops? Or 28. <laughs> that picture you all had on Facebook, I, I was just like, I can't believe that. You were a baby, baby, baby. You know. Of course, your big brother was, you know, he was all grown up. But it's hard to imagine. You know, I had a dream, not the one I told you about, but I had a dream. Is this last week was week for me for dreams. And I don't know when it was but, or why it was, but we didn't have church at the normal time. We had it early. <laughs> earlier than nine. Earlier. Earlier than nine. And um, it was something special. And then after we were done, and dismissed, people started coming in. This side was full. And I, I don't know when it was. It made sense. You know how dreams are. They make sense when you have them. But uh, it didn't, you know, after I woke up, I'm like, it don't make any sense. But this side was full. And, and a, a gentleman said, are we, are we okay sitting here? And I said, well, yeah, I tease them all the time about needing some to move over. And, uh, but you know, we need to be in prayer about that. That the church, not just this church, but all the churches could be full again. But I, it was It was amazing. And there was a few more in the back, you know, on this side. But this side was just about full. There must have been 50, 60 people over here. 
What a blessing. Continue to remember Dave Cox. We've been praying for him for a while. That's, um, he's got a special wife, that's for sure. And Glenn and Karen, we need to remember them. And uh, keep Sam and Linda in your prayers. One day last week, I forget what day it was, it's been too busy, but uh, I saw Sam at Walmart. And I said, what are you doing here? And he said, uh, he had to be here for closing on that house. So it was good to see him and give him a hug. And, but uh, miss him. Anybody else before we go to prayer? My cousin, Gary Howe. Gary? Gary's got a lot of things wrong with him. Cancer, heart. Diabetes is very bad. He may lose his foot or his leg. And how's Eddie? He's doing better, thank you. I haven't talked to him for ever. He's doing better, thank you. Okay. Okay, I saw. Prayer vigil on Friday nights also. That's where we collectively pray for all these requests. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 The, the schools and all the workers. And yeah. uh, the uh, football team has been quarantined at West. Oh. Which will now go from school to school. Football's team's quarantined. Wish I knew how to spell that. You'd think I would by now. Anybody else? All right, let's go to prayer. Father God, we thank you and we praise you. You are the God of everything. You deserve every praise that we have and some that we don't have, Lord. We, we praise you, Lord, for the good news with Oakland and uh, Tippy. Bobby Joe and all it's just it's just incredible. And Max getting to to drive and for um, Kathy and all of these things, Lord, that we praise you for. We ask you to be with um, Scott and Debbie and Kim Tilly, the unspoken request that we've had, and we, we, we ask for travel mercies. Lord, and be with the um, back to school um, hot dog fest, whatever we want to call it, we're going to have. Be there, we pray, and anoint that time. Use us. And have speak to people and have them come. Lord, we pray for Gary with all the troubles he's having, and but and uh, for Tina. And Lord, let them know what they need to know. Let them hear what they need to hear from the Cleveland Clinic. We continue to pray for Gail. Sam and Linda and Karen, Carolyn, Lord. We pray for, continually pray for David Cox and for George and Lily and for Ed, Lord. We thank you that uh, he's doing some better. We lift up 
the prayer vigil Bible study that's on Fridays. And we pray for our schools as they prepare to go back into session. And our football team who's under quarantine, Lord, be with them. Be with our country, our service men and women, and our police officers and firefighters. And Lord, we do pray for Old Town Church and Friendship Church that they can again be full of your people. And we pray for these the, the persecuted Christians all over the world. And we give you all of these things. We just lift them to your beautiful, precious name, the name of Jesus. And amen. This time we'll have tithes and offerings. Danny, would you and Mark take the offering? Almighty, gracious God, we ask that you would use these gifts, these tithes, these offerings above the tithes for your glory. Use them here locally and around the world. And we'll give you all the praise. In your name we ask. And amen. Okay, we need to have a quick board meeting right after church. And you might as well stay standing because we're going to sing. 310. He lives.
You. you may be seated. Well, surprise, surprise, we're continuing uh, this morning with the battle inside me. The, and we're just going to jump right into it because it's already getting late. The fourth mental habit that we need to develop if we're really going to change our lives and defeat these weapons of self-destruction is um, whenever I'm afraid is to turn our hearts toward God. Yeah, we get afraid sometimes. Anybody want to admit that? <laughs> yeah, it's scary out there. It's a scary world. But so we remind ourselves every day what Jesus did for us. Ask the Holy Spirit to give us better thoughts Realize that I have a, a, a new ability because of the Holy Spirit to say no. And then turn our thoughts to God if you're afraid. Romans 8, 14 through 16 says, this is how God's Spirit sets me free from this attitude of fear. If you're a person, if you're sitting out there or watching and you just seem to be afraid all the time, listen up. For the spirit God gives you does not make you slaves and cause you to be afraid. Instead, the spirit makes you God's children. And by the spirit's power, we cry out to God, Father, my Father. Now, in Aramaic, I mean, we always pray that way, right? Father God, Father, you know. But in Aramaic, these words, it means daddy. It's, it's Abba. And it means daddy. God's spirits, spirit joins himself to our spirits and declares that we are God's children. I don't think that'll ever stop amazing me. <laughs> but we are God's children. And if you're afraid, stop focusing on those fears and focus on the Father, the Daddy. What do you call your Daddy? Is it still Daddy? Huh? I I'm talking, yeah. I'm, I'm looking at her back there since she's sitting right next to her daddy. You still call him daddy now that you're all grown up? Yeah. yeah. Okay. See? The, 
the spirit that God gives you doesn't make you slaves to fear. He makes you God's children. You're a son or daughter of God and families take care of each other. You know, I'd worry about you if it wasn't for them three boys you got. But I know they'll take care of you. Matter of fact, I pity the fool <laughs> that would try to do anything to you. You know, so if you're ever afraid, the first thing you do is, wait a minute. Don't you know who my father is? My father created the universe. And I'm a child of him. And God takes care of his kids. What are you most afraid of? Now, I know some school teachers like Katie that uh, they're not afraid to speak in front of the children in front of their classes, but they're scared to death to speak in front of adults. Don't know why. Are you afraid of heights? Gosh. That's me. I'm not so much afraid of heights as, you know, if I would fall getting there, you know, when it hits, you know, but anyway. And new, maybe new social, social situations. <laughs> the number one fear a lot of people have is being out of control. 2 Timothy 1.7. Okay. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love and self-control. And the more you're controlled by the Holy Spirit, the more self-control you're going to have. See, fear is not from God. When God's Spirit comes into your life, you're filled with love and power and self-control. That's not me talking. That's 2 Timothy. Okay? So, you, would you like to have that? You want that? Okay, Holy Spirit, fill me up. I want everything. Give me all you got. I love this. Um, Rick Warren said this, be mastered by the master and you can handle anything. Did you catch that? Be mastered by the master and you can handle anything. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Not some things, not the easy things, but all things. Hey, the fifth thing we learned from Romans 8 is about the cure for hopelessness. Verses 17 and 18, we got that? Learn to focus on the long term, not the short term. You know, they did a, a, a Harvard University did a study some a few years back and found the more long term you're thinking, the more successful you are. But so often we only think about today. What feels good right now? What's easier right now? But the long term longer term that you think, the more successful you'll be. And Christians, we win this hands down. Because when we think in terms, you know, long term, we call it eternity. Eternity. 
not just life here, not even 40, 50 years ahead, not even like this lady at Hillview that's uh, 100, uh -oh, 110 years old. She's 110. She's, pretty, she's still pretty bright and still gets around awfully good for 110. No, we're talking about trillions of years. And living in light of eternity is the key to being the most successful you can be. Oh, I don't know. I, I just can't seem to do anything right. I mess up. Eternity. Can you imagine that? Trillions of years? Mm. So, if we'll think long term, that gives you the strength to handle the short term. The short term pain, losses, failures. See? Because we're thinking long term. Society, though, teaches you to think short term. Yep, so does Satan. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, Paige. I don't know. You just, I don't know if you're going to be able to handle this. See, he said that to you, hasn't he? Yeah. But Romans 8, 17 and 18 talks about the promises of God. Notice it doesn't say we do possess, but since we are his children, we will possess the blessing that he keeps for his family. And we will also possess, I love this, with Christ what God has kept for him. What? We get to possess? We get to have what, you know, God has kept for Christ? Well, when you get to heaven, you're going to get rewarded for how well you did with what you were given. Your time, your money, your influence, your talents. It's called stewardship of life. God has given you things th that you're a steward of. You're a steward. And you're going to be rewarded on how good a steward you were. And <laughs> you're going to be rewarded for what Jesus did. Try to grab a hold of that a minute. You're going to be rewarded for what Jesus did. And we also will, and also we will possess with Christ what God has kept for him. Co heirs with Christ. Now story for eternity. Jesus Christ. Okay, fine. None of you have ever watched, you know. And co-starring you. Wow. You're going to share in Christ's glory. Remember two weeks ago, I maybe? Did you keep all of my commands? No, but he did. Jesus did. Well, you're going to share in the glory that Christ deserves. So why focus on these little petty problems that you're facing right now? Concentrate long term. The long term benefits. My mind can't wrap it. I can't wrap my mind around it. That we're going to share in Christ's glory 
for a day or two. So what's it? No, forever and ever and ever. Christ's glory. And then it says, for if we share Christ's suffering, we'll also share His glory. I consider that what we suffer at this present time cannot be compared with all the glory that is going to be revealed to us. Hmm. It's not always easy living for Christ. Amen? You agree with that? Yeah? But the benefit, oh, the benefit long term is going to far outlast the pain, the suffering, whatever you've had to face. So we need to focus long term, not short term. Don't focus on the here and now. Okay? The sixth habit is to remind myself that God is good. God's good and He's in control. God's still in control. All the weirdness, <laughs> we think it's weird, that's going on, He's got it. Don't worry. I got that. And this is how God sets us free from the self-destructive weapon of bitterness. Remember we talked about that? Remind yourself every day that God's good and He's in control. Now we don't have time to get into these, to this, but verses... Um, 19 through 25. Did you get that one, Jamie? It's, it's a long one. But Paul is describing how sin has damaged the whole world. Now read that. <laughs> he says that everything in the world is broken, suffering, and lost its original purpose. Everything in the world's in pain. Sin broke it all. Yeah. Sin broke it. Verse 20 reads, Everything created is subject to frustration, waiting to be liberated from its bondage to decay. All of creation groans in pain like childbirth. So, most of you ladies sitting in here know exactly what I'm talking about. Guys will pretend they... Have you ever seen those things that they can... It's like a, a belly thing that the guys can put on? Silliness. <laughs> yeah. Talk to the women about, you know. No. But, and we groan inwardly. That's why life's so hard. Think about all the earthquakes and the volcanoes and... The crazy, the fires, the crazy weather that we have. That's because the environment even is broken and is groaning. The Holy Spirit even groans in pain for us. And the result of living in a broken world is pain, and the result of pain is this self-destructive weapon of bitterness. Ever been bitter? Yep. He's got a nicer house than I do. She's got a better job than I do. I never made more than whatever. $5 an hour, $10 an hour. And you start comparing and you get envious and jealous and bitter. And you, you hold grudges. 
and you become resentful and it'll eat you up. It'll eat you alive. And you know how to deal with it? Remind yourself that God is good and He's still in control. God's still in control, baby. I'll never forget Bruce saying that. He's still in control. He was a dear friend of mine. Still is. But life is unfair. I won't pick on you anymore. But did she ever say that to you? That's not fair. Yeah, that's not fair. My kids did all the time. But life is unfair because it's broken. Romans 8 says that there are four things you've got to remember. Pain is not an option. Okay? But misery and moaning and bitterness is optional. And you can only overcome these things by remembering these four magnificent truths of Romans 8. Verse 26 and 27 reads, The Spirit helps us with our weakness. We do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit Himself speaks to God for us. God is praying to himself for us. The Spirit of God prays for us and even begs God for us with deep feelings that words cannot explain. See, God sees what's in our heart and the Spirit speaks to God for his people in the way that, that God wants so no matter, no matter what you're going through, know that the Holy Spirit is praying for you. Yes, we talked about it. The Holy Spirit is just as powerful as God. But they chose, they, the Son, the Holy Spirit, choose to submit to God the Father. And then the next verse says, And we know that in all things God works for the good for those who love Him, who've been a called, a called according to His purpose. See, God's, God's greater than your problems, enemies, critics. Anybody have any of those? <laughs> and He's using it all for good. It's not all good, but God's using it for good. There's a difference. And God wants you to succeed. If you're a Christian, God's for you. Romans 8.31 says, So what can we say about such wonderful things? If God is for us, who can be against us? If you're watching at, at, at home or wherever, if God's with you, you, I don't know what you're facing, but God does. And whatever that is, know and claim that God is with you and nothing, nothing can come against us. You know, I'm in the family. My daddy, my father is God and he wants me to succeed. And finally, God will give you what you need. If you're feeling down and bitter, remind yourself that God's good and he's sovereign. And the Spirit is praying for me. And He's using everything for good in my life. 
Because he wants us to succeed. And he's going to give me and you what you need. Notice I said need, not necessarily want. Because sometimes what we want will just bring more pain and heartache. Verse 32 says, Since God did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't God who gave us Christ give us everything else? See, God loved us enough to let Jesus die on the cross. Don't you think he loves you enough to help you with your, oh, I don't know, debt? Your health problems? See, there's nothing in your life that God doesn't care about. Even if you lose your keys, Judy, remember that a few weeks ago? And if God didn't even um, spare his son to solve my biggest problem, everything else is just, you know, small taters. Finally, we come to the last mental health habit that we need to develop. And uh, that's to destroy the seventh enemy. That's insecurity. Insecurity can really mess your life up. And part of the worst part, I guess, of insecurity is rejection. Ever been rejected? Maybe, sadly, maybe it was from your parents. Why can't you be more like your brother or sister? Maybe you were rejected by kids on the playground. Were you always the last one to be picked and they really didn't want to pick you? I had that problem some when I, I went to Northmoreland Elementary. And so there was a little short guy. I never was short. <laughs> surprise, surprise. But uh, so what we did, they, they were doing that. They were you know, they'd pick him last or not even want to pick him at all. But I knew something about him. He could shoot that ball. He could put it in the hoop. So one day I said, well, Melvin and I will take on all of you. And we did. And we won. Because I was tall. I get them rebounds if, well, it was me missing, not him so much. That little boy could shoot. Maybe you've been rejected by a spouse. It hurts. But listen to this God will never reject you, God will never stop loving you. Because I'm in the family, you're in the family, and God, he, double negatives, I know, sorry, but he cannot, he cannot not, it's even hard for me to say it. See what you teachers did to me. He cannot not love you, love his family. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for what, everything that you've done. Thank you that uh, there's no condemnation in my life for everything that I've done. Thank you for what you did <laughs> that the law couldn't do. Thank you for destroying sin's control over me. It's your righteousness, Father, that that is my ticket into heaven. And when I feel ashamed, let me remember what you did on the cross, Jesus. And give me better thoughts. 
I don't want a mindset of self-destruction. I want life and peace. And help me remember that now I have the ability to say no. It's not just my willpower, but spirit power. And I'm not obligated to give in to those compulsions anymore. And when I'm afraid, help me to turn my thoughts to you and, and remember that I'm your child. God, help me to focus on the long term, not the short term. And use the pain and suffering in my life for good, for your glory. And most of all, thank you that you will never, ever stop loving me or reject me. Be my Lord. Be my master, Jesus. My savior. My boss. The manager of my life. And by faith, I ask you to accept me into your family. Because it's in your name that I pray. And amen. Amen. Okay. Our uh, closing hymn is My Jesus, I Love Thee. Number 172. My Jesus, I Love Thee. Our benediction this morning is found in Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else 
in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. And amen.